This is my old T962C reflow oven. It's one of the biggest drawer type ovens you can get before you have to step up to a conveyor. I was going to say it served me well for many years, but it's kind of been a bit average. It's got some problems. The controller is really not very good. It's got some fixed profiles. You can edit it. I've never actually succeeded in editing them. You can reflash the firmware. There is open source alternative firmware, but I haven't bothered going down that path. But I really need to be able to control the profiles a lot better now. That's because I'm in the process of switching over to a fully unleaded um, production process. I've been using a combination of leaded and unleaded for many years. And I want to standardize on one type of solder and then use it for everything. And it really needs to be something that's ROHS compliant. Uh, there are a couple of other things that need fixing in this oven as well. The, uh, the base that the PCBs go onto tends to flex because it expands and contracts as it heats and cools. And uh, it also produces a lot of fumes. So, uh, and the heat is not very even, so I need to add a, um, an air mixer. Not really a fan, just a way of getting the air sort of a bit turbulent so that it moves around inside and evens up the heat distribution a little bit. Now the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to replace the onboard controller with the Reflow Master Pro, which was designed and manufactured by my friend Sion. This is an aftermarket device that you use to connect to Reflow ovens. It reads from sensors in the oven, controls the heating elements, controls the fan, and it does a whole lot more than a typical Reflow oven controller. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the original controller and attempt to replace it with the Reflow Master Pro. Now the thing is, right now it's a Sunday and I need this oven working again tomorrow, Monday. I'm a bit under the pump here, so uh, hopefully nothing will go wrong. But before we can make any changes, there is one really important thing we've got to do. There, now it's sorted. We can get in there and fix this thing. Now that the cover is off, the controller looks really complicated. It looks like there's a lot of cabling here, but it's not really as bad as it looks. Here we've got the factory controller and main power comes in here. It's a 15 amp circuit. Uh, goes through a fuse, which is inside there. I think it's a glass filled fuse, sorry, a sand filled fuse. And that then goes through to the main power switch the power switch supplies this uh, solid state relay. We'll get to that in just a moment. It also comes to this transformer. So coming out of this transformer is nine volts AC, which goes onto the main board and through a full wave bridge rectifier to get DC out of this. You'd probably get like 12, 11, 12-ish volts DC coming out of there. So yeah, I haven't done the maths on that. So um, then, the controller has connections through to the front panel for the display and the buttons. We don't care about any of that anymore. We don't even care about the old controller. So there are really only three things that we care about. One is this power supply. I'm going to use this 9 volts AC, rectify it and produce 5 volts, which I will then use to power the Reflow Master Pro. We have the big solid state relay here. What this is doing is allowing us to use a logic level to control mains power to the heating element. The Reflow Master Pro does not come with a solid state relay because it'll be different depending on what oven you're controlling. And uh, this particular one has an input that's rated between three and 32 volts DC. So as long as we provide that voltage to it from here, it should just be a matter of making a connector that goes on here, go into the output from the uh, Reflow Master Pro and it will then be able to control it. Then there are also, did I say three things? <laughs> I mean four. So the third thing is these are the temperature sensors. These are the ones that are part of the existing oven. Now I could just reuse these. The Reflow Master Pro comes with some temperature sensors, but I don't know what the specifications are of the ones that are in the existing oven. They're typically a, a standard K type thermocouple I might plug it in and see if we get reasonable temperature values coming out. If it is, that's great. I can just plug this in and we're done for that. And the other aspect is the fan. So there will be an output here somewhere. One of these pairs of wires, probably this one, is to run the cooling fans in the back of the unit. Well, not really cooling fans, they're exhaust fans. They extract air, pull air through the oven and then blow it out the back. And that is to control the cooling curve 
and make sure that the contents of the oven can cool down at a controlled rate. So I'm now just going to clean this up a little bit and isolate the connections that I need for the Reflow Master Pro. Before going any further, I wanted to check the situation with the thermocouples. I need to know if these ones need to be replaced. And it looks like we have some sad news. As you can see here, there is a really big temperature discrepancy between the two thermocouples. They are approximately here and here inside the enclosure. And if I reach inside and put my hand on one of them, you'll probably see the temperature change. So TC1 is changing now when I touch that one. It went from 29 to 27 degrees. Now it's gone back up to 28. If I touch the other one, it goes up a little bit, up to 19 degrees. But 10 degree delta between those, that's not good. That means these thermocouples probably are not going to work properly with the RMP. Unfortunately, that means a whole lot more work for me because these thermocouple cables run in through this enclosure, through the insulation. Replacing them is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but oh well, we've got to do it. With the cover fully removed, we can now see just how simple the connections are. You can see the two thermal couple connections, one on the left, one on the right. This is the connection that goes to the extraction fan for, cool, for controlling the cool down cycle. And this is a connection to the heating element. So if we provide 20, oh, 240 volts on that, the oven gets hot. If we provide 12 volts on that, the oven gets cold. And with these, we can tell which way it's going. So there really aren't that many connections to control a reflow oven. So now I have replaced the thermocouples with the ones provided by Sion and uh, they now protrude down and hang inside the chamber. I also went around and got some more aluminium tape and sealed up the edges around here. So there won't be any heat coming out through here, no random airflow. And while I've been working on all of this, I've also had the 3D printer running and I printed the enclosure. There is the option to buy the enclosure when you get the Reflow Master Pro, but I just downloaded the STLs and printed it. Sion's provided a really nice design that just snaps together. Now, next thing I've got to do is put the cover back on with these cables feeding through and do all the power supply connections and figure out how I'm going to mount this. Now, the Reflow Master Pro requires a 5 volt input. I've got 9 volts AC coming out of that little transformer and I want a way to solve that. So what I've done is got a 5 volt regulator module and some little surface mount full way bridge rectifiers. And I've just attached the bridge rectifier directly onto the back of the module. That means that I can now put the module inside the enclosure, wire it to the back of the DC jack, and I can just feed AC into here and everything should be fine. Well, I've hit a little bit of an impasse and it's my own fault for not paying attention. This connection which goes out to the exhaust fans, which I thought were 12 or 24 volt, turns out they're actually 240 volt AC fans. That means to control them, I'm going to need another solid state relay. And uh, I need one with a 5 volt input so that it's compatible with the Reflow Master Pro. I don't have one. I've only got 12 volt input SSRs here. So that means until I can get a new SSR tomorrow, I can't hook this up. I can't finish the job. Now because of that, I'm being delayed anyway. It means that I've made a decision that I'm going to change the way I do the enclosure. I was going to reuse the existing enclosure as much as possible, but it's kind of impractical. So instead, I'm just going to get myself a plastic box and put it over the top of all of this so that it's all well insulated, but still easy to get to for maintenance purposes. So that means I've got to wrap it up for tonight, get some dinner, start again tomorrow. Well, it's now day two of this one day build. I went out this morning and got this plastic case. I also got a small solid state relay and this part is now all wired up. I've got everything prepared. All I've got to do now is make the final connections, put the cover on and then we can test it. This enclosure is now screwed onto the metal lid. And one thing that I did was make sure that I have a good ground connection coming through here. So this is the 15 amp connection coming in from the mains. It then has ground that comes through and that goes through a screw here into the metal chassis. And I buzz it out with the multimeter. I know we've got good ground all the way through. That's really important to check. Then we've got the active and neutral coming in. They are both switched through this double pole single throw rocket switch, which is rated to the 15 amps necessary for this. We've got the fuse connection here. This is the solid state relay for the heating system. Down under here is the little SSR, which will turn the fans on and off. And we've got our nine volt AC output here. So the next connection that we need coming through to the controller, you can see here that I've got this connection for power to come in. 
that will power up the Reflow Master Pro. Then we have the two connections for the thermocouples. We've got the connection to control the heating SSR and we've got the connection to control the cooling SSR. What I'm going to do is pass all of those up through this hole and I've already screwed the back part of the Reflow Master Pro onto here just using some little self-tapping screws through the 3D printed case. So that will be able to snap into place and mount on here, all very convenient. Power switch on the side, RMP on the front. The cables are now coming up through the hole in the base that you can see here and everything is connected. I've put the fuse back in place as well so it's ready to go. And if I pop the cover off, see if I can get it off, there we go. Then we've got the cables here going into the back of the Reflow Master Pro. So I've got the connections here to the two thermocouples and also to the SSR for controlling the heating and the SSR for controlling the fans. You can also see the dodgy, if I can get the field of view here, you can see the dodgy little voltage regulator module. So we're feeding the 9 volts AC coming out of the transformer in here, up to here, rectifying it and then converting it down to 5 volts and everything is fine. So I'll just jam this back on here and now we've got ourselves a nice little controller. From this side you can see that it puts the interface for the Reflow Master Pro right up where I can see it on the top of the oven. Control buttons on the side there, power button on the left. Time to plug it in. The only convenient 15 amp circuit I have is up here near the circuit board which is up behind this area here. So I brought it out into the mechanical work area and uh, let's see how we go. Got to press and hold the power button for five seconds. It starts up. There we go. We have some life in it. And from here, it's the regular setup process. So all of the documentation for the Reflow Master Pro, which is really good, will take you through the process of connecting it to Wi-Fi and um, setting up profiles and those sorts of things. I've customized this profile, so I've actually run this oven a bunch of times now with this controller and done a whole lot of testing with it and it's working pretty well. One of the things is, is that the 962C is a very large oven but it's only about three and a half kilowatts so it's about double the size of one of the T962As which are the really common ones, they're about this wide but it's probably only about 50% more power and the result is that it's slightly underpowered for the volume that it is. So I've customized the profiles to do things like extend the soak time a little to give the oven time to get up to the temperature that it needs to be before the spike begins. But apart from that, this is working really well. So I'm really super happy with the, uh, the controller. It's made this much nicer to use than the original Chinese controller that was on it. And um, one of the things that I really want to be able to do now is log and monitor from this as well. That can be a future project though. I'm going to get back to that because there is a web interface that comes off the Reflow Master Pro and you can use that for reconfiguring it, changing profiles and that sort of thing. But you can't really use it for monitoring and you definitely can't use it for control because something like this you should never control remotely. If you're not nearby and ideally <laughs> with a fire extinguisher handy, you should not be turning on a reflow oven when you're not right there to deal with any issues that come up. So thank you Sion for making this really cool controller. It's made this oven much more useful for me and uh, yeah it's a really good upgrade. If you've got a reflow oven and you want to put a good controller on it check out the Reflow Master Pro. See you next time.